Welcome to lecture 14 which is on electromagnetic spectrum. Basically in this lecture you are going to learn the sunlight uh, which we are using in remote sensing as a source of illumination and the different components and the application of each component. So, we begin with this lecture. Now, the source of electromagnetic radiation is sun. We are using uh, most of the time the capabilities of the sunlight. So, in the daytime those uh, remote sensing images are uh, recorded. But in addition to the sunlight, we should remember that all the objects above absolute 0, they are emitting the electromagnetic radiations. And because of that property, the sunlight is there, they emit, uh, the object is emitting, we are able to see different objects with different illumination, with different reflectance characteristics. So, each of the object um, above absolute 0 is emitting some kind of energy. So, we are using the both in remote sensing and trying to capture this electromagnetic radiation through the sensor which convert this energy into useful information. So, if you look at the electromagnetic radiation, it has two components. So, in two perpendicular direction I can break it down. So, one is the y direction which is the electric field and another is the x direction which is the magnetic field. So, electric field and magnetic field these are the two uh, components which are mutually perpendicular to each other. The any uh, energy any radiation is travelling in the sine wave form. So, that is why you can see the sinusoidal wave form on both the axis along y axis along x axis those two sine wave forms. So, these are the two components of electromagnetic radiation and you can see from the name also electro and magnetic. So, these are the two components which are mutually perpendicular to each other. Now, this radiation has a certain characteristic and we can define in terms of its frequency. So, what is the frequency? Frequency the number of peaks as you can see those ups and downs. So, number of peaks uh, in uh, at a fixed point in a unit time. So, per unit time how many peaks are passing through a point that defines the frequency. And the other parameter is the wavelength through which we are defining. So, wavelength is characterizing the distance from one wave peak to another wave peak in the same phase. So, here you can see in the diagram the wavelength is shown these two peaks distance, distance between the two peaks because they are in the same phase positive phase, the other one is the negative phase. So, that distance defines the wavelength of the radiation and how many peaks are passing through a particular point in unit time that is the frequency and both are related to each other. So, we know our from our previous knowledge also that we can relate these two together. The frequency is c which is the speed of the light velocity of the light divided by uh, the wavelength. So, that means the uh, frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So, here because c is a constant quantity we know its value 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So, uh, higher is the frequency lower is the wavelength lower is the frequency higher is the wavelength. So, we should remember actually this relationship and this will be very useful in further understanding the various components of electromagnetic radiation. So, if I multiply frequency with the wavelength it is always a constant quantity. So, this clearly shows that it is inverse they are inversely related to each other. So, the wave relationship is c is equal to f into lambda once we know one quantity if I know the frequency I can calculate wavelength if I know the wavelength I can calculate the frequency of the electromagnetic radiations. So, wavelength we are defining in 
some units so it could be a centimeter because this is normally a small value. So, normally we are using micrometer or the nanometer unit. So, 10 to the power minus 6 meter is micrometer and 10 to the power minus 9 meter is a nanometer. So, because of the small quantity we are normally using micrometer and nanometer units. Coming to frequency, frequency we are measuring in either hertz or kilohertz, megahertz and gigahertz also. So, we are defining those into these units. Now, electromagnetic spectrum it is ranging uh, from gamma rays in fact, from gamma rays and cosmic rays also prior to that also the electromagnetic spectrum continues and then it goes up to radio waves and further. So, we will take up the small part uh, C between gamma rays and radio waves and understand what are the components and what is the role of each component. Now, the thing which you have to remember is that all these radiations are traveling with the same speed. They may have a different frequency, they may have a different wavelength, but their speed of travel is same as the velocity of light. Now, look at the electromagnetic spectrum here. So, this is a part of the sunlight. I am not showing you the full spectrum. Prior to that also there and here also on both sides also this continues. So, if we see the major component only the major component here I am showing here the ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is somewhere here it is a prior to gamma rays and x rays. So, ultraviolet part is there gamma rays and x rays we are not using in remote sensing because they are used in the medical science. So, we go for our x rays, we go for CT scan, we for MRI scan. So, we are using actually those rays in the medical science. Then visible part, next part is the visible part of the spectrum, the range of that wave uh, the wavelength range which is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer. Please remember this range this is very useful and will be utilized at many places. So, visible range is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer. Then uh, next to that in continuation we have infrared part, we have reflected infrared part, thermal infrared part. So, you can see that it has a certain range. So, within a certain range it is infrared then reflected and then thermal infrared part where we deal mostly with that temperature related aspects. Then after that is a microwave part. So, microwave region is a very very long region ranging from 1 millimeter to 1 meter and after that is the radio waves 30 centimeter to thousand of the meters. So, we are actually in here in uh, remote sensing as far as the mapping part is concerned we are using mostly the uh, visible part, the thermal infrared, the microwave region part we are not using radio wave, we are not using ultraviolet, we are not using x rays, we are not using gamma rays. So, let us see the complete spectrum. So, here on the right side diagram we can see the electromagnetic spectrum and the number of waves you know the uh, sinusoidal wave is indicating the number of waves which are passing through a point. Um, so, if we are towards the gamma rays and x rays the uh, the frequency is very high the number of rays which are passing through a point is very high and because of this capability uh, it can penetrate into our body because of the higher frequency it is striking to the body and can penetrate into the body and this property is used in medical science for x rays and for seeing uh, the skeleton of the body. Then uh, comes the ultraviolet ray, uh, we are also not using and this ultraviolet ray most of the time is scattered in the atmosphere. So, it is not reaching in a very large intensity to the earth surface. We are using ultraviolet protected lens also when we are purchasing 
by specks and it is because this ultraviolet rays are also harmful to the human body. Then next is the visible part which is shown in the different colors because our eye is sensitive only in this part of the spectrum. Then infrared microwave we have the different kind of uh, remote sensing satellites and remote sensing sensors which can capture that and give us the images. We are using TV, FM, radio wave, short wave for this communication purpose. The purpose is different. Yeah. So, here we will focus mainly on mapping part to carry out the mapping and monitoring of the area. So, we will not focus much on the communication part for which the other kind of satellites are used. So, if we see very big spectrum at electromagnetic spectrum, a very very tiny part of that spectrum which is here is used by our human eye. We can see only this, we require a special kind of uh, devices in order to interact with the other part of the spectrum. So, we have uh, now sensors accordingly which have been designed in uh, to work in different part of electromagnetic spectrum. So, as you can see here this is one uh, spot sensor which is a French satellite and it is working in the visible part of the spectrum. Whereas, this is a Canadian radar set which is working in the radar microwave. So, sensors are specifically designed to work in a particular wavelength region and we are deriving the uh, characteristics of that wavelength region in order to identify the objects in order to carry out our interpretation. So, if we look at now the visible part of the spectrum, very very tiny part of the spectrum, the whole electromagnetic spectrum. So, this has been enlarged, this tiny part has been enlarged which is ranging from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer, you can see different colors. It has broken down into uh, some colors which are uh, the combination of the three primary colors red, green and blue. This is called visible part because this is visible to the human eye. We can see only this part with our normal vision. Our eye is sensitive to this part of the spectrum and that is why the most of the remote sensing sensors, the natural resource satellite sensors, they have been designed to capture the data in the visible part of electromagnetic spectrum. So, if we uh, see further breakup of that uh, visible part of the spectrum, uh, you can see in the entire spectrum this is visible part and there are certain colors. There is a red color which is on my right side and there is a blue or the violet color which is on my the left side. Then in intermediate colors are there in between there are colors uh, say yellow color say green color or mixing of these colors are there. So, uh, range of this as I told you is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer. So, let us further understand the division of this 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer. Now, we know from our background knowledge that there are three primary colors they are popularly known as RGB. So, blue color, green color and red color they are the three primary colors and we are using uh, in the visible spectrum. So, no single primary color can be created out of these three primary color. If you mix up the two color together, you cannot create a third primary color, but you can create a secondary color from there. So, all other colors have been created, have been generated from these three primary colors red, green and blue. And the sunlight as we can see is also not a uniform or a homogeneous color and it is composed of various wavelength of radiations. So, visible part of the radiation uh, uh, components um, can be shown by the different colors and you can see in this diagram here there is a prism and there is a sunlight. So, this is a sunlight when you pass the sunlight through this prism what happens? You can see the spectrum of the colors, Vivgyor kind of a thing. 
So, this light will bend downward also and when you are passing through a prism and you can see the different colors with the different wavelength region. So, we are in actually talking of this particular wavelength which is visible to our eye. We expand this red, green and blue colors. So, we have on the left side starting from violet color. So, violet color has certain wavelength region 0 0.4 to 0 0.446. In fact, these are to be remembered. Then next is the blue color part of it in continuation. Then the next is the green part, a yellow part of the spectrum, the orange part of the spectrum and the red part of the spectrum. So, these are some of the uh, further divisions of the uh, visible wavelength have been done. So, these wavelength region let us say violet 0 0.4 to 0 0.446 this is called a band this particular range is called a band. So, these visible uh, regions have been either defined by their band or by the color. So, color is the violet. So, if I say violet uh, band or violet color so, we know what is the wavelength region or if I say red color then we am talking about the 0 0.6 to 0 0.0.7 micrometer. So, we have identified or uh, we have uh, uh, um, denoted these either by their colors primary these those colors which have been created or by the wavelength region. Now, this human eye you can see is sensitive to these colors only visible part of the spectrum and you can see only those colors which I have shown you in the previous slide and now our most of the sensors because uh, we have to interpret the data human eye has to interpret the data. So, most of the sensors are designed to work in these uh, visible part of the spectrum so that we can analyze this data very very quickly now also. Ultraviolet. So, ultraviolet region uh, actually we are not using and uh, most of this ultraviolet is, is scattered in the atmosphere and because of that scattering you can see the blue color of the sky. The infrared parts so there are certain sensors uh, which are working in this part of the spectrum and providing us the images. The analysis of those images is uh, entirely different than the normal images which you are acquiring from the uh, uh, visible part of the spectrum. Then there are microwave satellites working in the microwave region and we know the advantage uh, of the microwave we can penetrate uh, we can take the images day and night also. So, that advantage we are deriving and can, can penetrate through the cloud. So, we do not have the cloud cover now on the satellite image because the microwave can penetrate. So, we are deriving that advantage and there are certain wavelength region further division is shown here. We have P band, L band, S band, C band, X band, K U band and K band. So, these sensors have been designed to work in to provide the data in these wavelength region and we carry out the analysis. So, if we look at the uh, application part, so we have gamma rays and incoming radiation is completely absorbed by the upper atmosphere and it is not available to us for remote sensing applications. Then we come to the next is the x-ray. X-ray is also completely absorbed by the atmosphere and we are not employing in this remote sense. So, we are not employing this, we are not employing these two, but these two have very good applications as far as the medical science is concerned, medical instrumentations are concerned. Ultraviolet which is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 micrometer. So, wavelength less than 0 0.3 micrometer is completely absorbed by the ozone in the upper atmosphere and rest is scattered into the atmosphere. So, we are not using this also for our remote sensing work. Then we have the ultra uh, photographic ultraviolet and visible part. So, this is more important to us because this is also scattered 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer region and this uh, is the part where the sensors are taking the images capturing the images and 
the uh, analysis can be done very very quickly. Then comes the infrared part. So, interaction with the matter here varies with the wavelength and atmospheric transmission takes place in this part of the region and this is also very very useful to us. Then we have the reflected infraradiation. So, here thermal properties uh, we are uh, understanding because uh, each of the object on the earth surface will have a different temperature characteristics. The middle infrared and far or thermal infrared. So, these are here we have the optical mechanical scanners and spatial systems, we do not have the film and they are capturing the radiations which are coming and with the help of that now we can carry out temperature related sea surface temperature, temperature of the different object temperature during the daytime and during the night time. So, all any temperature related thermal related study can be carried out say for example, the water is much cooler as compared to the surrounding feature. So, we can differentiate the two. Then comes to the microwave region. So, in the microwave region we have a longer wavelength which can penetrate cloud, fog and rains and images can be acquired in active mode and passive mode which you will learn little later what are those two different modes of acquiring the image. So, we are taking the advantage of that penetration cloud, fog or rain, uh, we do not get good images in the visible part of the spectrum. So, we uh, there we will like to take the advantage of the microwave images with us. Then we have the radar images, radar images are again active form of the microwave remote sensing, we are using this. Uh, to carry out uh, certain studies in our area. We are not using these radio waves, very long wavelength portion of electromagnetic spectrum. So, there is a term in remote sensing, we use it quite frequently and that term is called spectral bands. What is the spectral band? Certain wavelength region. So, if I say a blue band has 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. Uh, micrometer, this is a micrometer, so micrometer wavelength region, then this range is called a spectral band. So, range of wavelength instead of writing every time the wavelength region, I can say this is my band 1, this is my band 2 and the third one is my band 3. So, we can define the electromagnetic uh, spectrum either with the color or the spectral band. And the spectral band now we can do the numbering as far as a specific sensor is concerned. Now, we look at this uh, diagram electromagnetic uh, radiations which are interacting with the ground objects. So, this is the sun energy which is incident energy which is striking to the object. Now, the object here is water and on the landscape you can see the vegetation cover on both sides and there is a water. So, when this uh, incident energy will strike to any object on the earth surface, we will have the energy will, will be absorbed. So, water will absorb some of the energy and we will see that after some time the water becomes quite warm, the temperature increases. Some of the energy will be transmitted to the bottom. So, energy will be transmitted to the bottom of this uh, water body, the other energy will be reflected. So, from the surface some energy will be reflected and this reflected energy will be captured by the sensor body. So, we are more interested that how much part is reflected and captured by the sensor, but these are some processes which are taking place. So, we have some loss of energy due to the absorption and due to the transmission part of it. Now, you can see in this slide here um, the incoming radiations from the sun they are shown by the thicker arrow. So, uh, when they are striking to a big tree a large tree. So, at the surface of the tree there is a reflection which is taking place and also scattering is taking place on the surface. So, we have uh, scattering phenomena also depending upon the smoothness of the surface. If the surface is rough like here you can see the road surface is rough. So, scattering is minimum here because of the roughness of the surface. So, this is incident radiation and this is the reflected radiation from the rough surface. Here on this diagram right side is a, a leaf structure. So, the area covered by the object is very very small here. So, in the leaf structure when the 
uh, electromagnetic radiation is striking, we have transmission process R is the reflected process. So, there is a part of the energy which is reflected from this. The A part, A is the absorbed part. So, this leaves will absorb a part of the energy and T is the transmitted part. Some of part of the energy will be transmitted, it will not reach to the sensor part. So, incoming radiation actually has now several components, then some scattering also will take place. So, scattering uh, would again depend upon the uh, chemical and physical properties of the object body itself. So, uh, there are so many processes now which are taking place when the electromagnetic energy is striking to any object. Scattering will take place, the absorption will take place, the transmission will take place and then the reflection will take place. So, many objects will do all the processes, some will do part of the processes. So, mathematically if we have to define the uh, incident energy by I, uh, then it is equal to reflected energy plus transmitted plus absorbed plus the scattered energy. So, there is no uh, straightforward relationship that I is equal to R here. Um, the R is a small component of I and rest of the components are taken away by T, A and S which is transmitted energy, the absorbed energy and the scattered energy. Thank you. So, this is all about this lecture.